Hello, my name is Voya and welcome to my deep guide and into another edition, a new, another edition of Q&A. And let's get it on, yes, shall we? Mm -hmm. I'm currently torn between the Manta and the Note Max. I want a device I can use for writing mathematics, theorems and proofs and such. I'm looking for something that allows me to keep track of my notes with keyboards. Uh, with keywords and outlines as my notes grow. At first, the Super Notes seemed like the way to go for its elegant support of organizing tools. But now books uh, devices also offer outlines and links, and that large screen is very attractive. I like to see more what I've written. But then the Super Note tools might be more elegant and easier to learn. I'm not sure how much time I have to learn um, a new device. And there's the value, even if uh, only aesthetics, in having a well-designed tools, so I may end up trying both. I very much appreciate your channel. It is a great resource. Thank you so much. And thank you very much for a very thoughtful and really well summarized question because you're touching upon, upon uh, some really important differentiations between these two. Both devices are absolutely excellent, but there are differences. And I think that one of the key differences that you touched upon here is the elegance of tools and the user experience in the Supernote. So basically for your type of work scenario and your use case scenario, I think Supernote uh, Manta would be a better choice simply because of that elegance and the learning curve. And it doesn't end up just there. Yes, true. You have outlines, you have headings, you have links on both of them. So you have the functionality absolutely on both of them. And for my personal preferences, I use Note Max. I have both of them, but Note Max is my daily driver. But that doesn't cloud my opinion or the awareness that for specific type of uh, tasks, Supernote Manta is simply much better suited for that because it doesn't compromise on certain things and doesn't try to do everything at once and be kind of mediocre at all of it, but it actually excels at certain things and other things it just goes like, nope, not even doing it. And that's where the strengths of the Supernote platform and Supernote Manta lie. So for uh, extensive uh, writing, mathematics, theorems, and proofs and such. There's one really crucial aspect here, and that is the distraction-free element of the user experience. Not just the UI, but the user experience. Books user experience is distracting. The way that it's implemented, you always have a layer that is going to interject itself into your thought flow. And when you're doing something like this, which is really, really uh, demanding on your concentration, you want something that's out of the way and that your body mechanics, learned muscle gestures and controls can do automatically without you thinking, losing train of thought or uh, associating or allocating brain resources and concentration resources to perform a simple task. And for those purposes, the elegance, as you really nicely put it, of the tools of the Supernote platform and Supernote Mantha, I think are absolutely the way to go for this type of uh, use case scenario. Yes, the screen is bigger, it's nicer, it's better real estate and all that kind of stuff, but it's not going to give you as much of an advantage as the uh, elegance of tools and the functionality of the Supernote platform will for your use case scenario. At least that's my honest opinion and advice for your case. Hi Voya, question. If I want to use a device like you use Books Note Max, but I want it to be a smaller screen, okay. Is Books Go 10.3 your recommendation? Well, I think, yeah, because it's going to be either Books Go 10.3 or Note Air 3, uh, or Note Air 4C, depending on whether you need colors, front light, or not. So it really depends what your priorities are. So for example, if you want a monochromatic, but you need a front light, you have the Note Air 3, the regular one. If you want the colors, then you have Note Air 3 for no, not there for C, and now the new one tab X C, but that one's bigger, so that's sorry, no, not that. Um, but if you don't want uh, the front light and you want the content to be as close to the surface of the device and you want monochromatic and you're fine with the monochromatic, then Go 10.3 works. But with one caveat, and that is that the while you have all of the functionalities, the split screen functionality on a 10.3 is going to be cramped. It's going to be usable but it's gonna feel cramped. So that's something that you kind of have to uh, live with. 
But then again, you get the extended portability, lightness and all that kind of stuff, because it really, you can chuck it in any bag and it just works fine. So yeah, it's a balance of what your priorities are. Hi, can a Note Max handle heavy hand writing tasks like using it to learn math? Yes, I believe that it most definitely can handle that with quite a lot of ease. Uh, the only thing that you should maybe consider is, uh, do you need a 13.3 inch device or you, would you be actually okay with a 10.3 variant? And in that case, the answer to my previous question applies directly to you as well. What your priorities are, in regards to the front light, color content and all that kind of stuff. But absolutely, yes, all of these devices can handle uh, heavy handwriting uh, capabilities. However, there's one other really important caveat and that is the learning curve of the OS and the absolute necessity, 100% necessity to customize and go away from default settings that are on the books device because you will have a lot of distractions and a lot of problems out of the box. So out of the box experience is going to be considerably worse than with the say Super Note uh, Manta or the Remarkable Paper Pro or Remarkable 2 or Kindle Scribe for example. However, if you do put in the time to learn the device and then you start to optimize it and customize it exactly to your liking, then the books platform ekes out into an advantage uh, over time because it's open enough to give you access to so many options that you simply don't have access to in any of these other platforms and devices. And that gives you the ability and freedom to customize a device like Note Max exactly to your own needs, which can be a very considerable advantage for the users who are prepared and who are looking for something like that. It would be fun to see a discussion between you and Kid Bats Masters on uh, various merits and trade-offs between the Note Max and the Manta. And yes, I'm going to reach out to Kit and Brandon, and I think it's um, yeah high time to uh, reconnect and have a little bit of, bit of a sit down and a chat. And because a lot of things have changed and there's a lot of things to talk about, so it would be fun. Plus, it's really enjoyable to hang out with those guys. So yeah, thank you for that. I'm definitely gonna kind of poke them a little bit and see if we can uh, find a time to arrange something like that. I had a whole thing wrote out about the keyboard and I think I forgot to hit send. Oh no, that sucks so much. I hate when that happens. Um, I hate it so much that I've started actually developing a muscle memory that whenever I write like a considerable kind of thing, I can just go control A, control C, just control A to select everything and then control C to kind of copy paste, but you can't really do that on a bleh, like typing kind of thing. So yeah, that sucks, I feel for you. Um, anyway, short version, great video. Couldn't agree more about the backs as productivity powerhouse. Boop, boop. And the keyboard is almost more frustrating because now they fixed the double strike problem, which that typing experience is quite good, but everything else about it is sorely disappointing, especially the build quality. <laughs> At least we still have you showing us the A4 sized light. Thank you so much. And yes, I agree because as a concept, if that magnetic keyboard for the Note Max was done right, and it's so close, it's really, really close to being right because you're, you're correct. It's really comfortable to write on. It just took a little bit more effort and refinement to kind of get it right, but they didn't. In fact, they went the opposite way and those two pins are like a constant danger to physically break your screen, which is completely unacceptable. And it just slides around and it's just difficult to understand why, why not finish the job properly? I don't get it. So yeah. I feel for you. I'm quite happy with the Max and have been using it for writing, composing songs, charts, drafting, reading, and PDF editing. It is so much better for the eyes. Yeah, I agree. I too wish there was a way to uninstall the AI at L bloatware or at least not see it. Uh, the other inconvenience for me is the device doesn't seem to have a GPS antenna. One reason I got it was for studying digital maps, VNC charts on the bright side. Not being told where my location should have improved my navigation skills. I'm not going to show you the exact location here, but absolutely it does work. Uh, the only thing is that you need to enable it as a location service and you need to give the app or the browser, whoever permission to use location services. But uh, yeah, it does have it. So you absolutely can use it.
as a teacher, I need color. I want a large max color. Well, you didn't get a large max color, but you did get a tab X color or the tab XC. So you do get that uh, in the same type of housing, 13.3 inch screen. But my experience and my feeling is that there's going to be some caveats, but yeah, there's going to be a front light and a color in this type of format. So it's coming. This is in regards to the knock free split keyboard that I use frequently. It's interesting that you said you didn't have an issue with the knock while in wireless mode. I bought the keyboard a few weeks ago and it's been a nightmare for me trying to get it to work in wireless mode. I've tried on my MacBook Pro as well as on my Windows 11 computer at work. Anytime I try to use it in wireless mode, the input was super delayed. It wouldn't connect half the time and when it did connect it would only work for up to 30 minutes before it started to feel like there was a delay. Uh, it's shame because I absolutely love typing on this thing. I did get in touch with the company and they are sending me a replacement which I hope works because I just love how uh, love for it to work wirelessly just for the sake of keeping my desk neat. Um, yeah, as I replied in your comment down there, but I'm just adding it here in the case for somebody else finds it useful. Um, I did not experience that at all and I'm using that keyboard for a while now extensively in many, many different situations and almost exclusively in the wireless mode. And I've used it on Android devices. I used it on a PC as well, on different PCs, on my desktop, on my laptop and all that sort of stuff and in different types of environments as well. So I didn't get interferences. I didn't get like, even when I had like two different uh, 2.4 gigahertz uh, uh, receivers, one for a Logitech mouse, one for the knock free, and they were next to each other. They weren't really, really battering, uh, battling for anything. Everybody had their own frequency and they were working along nicely. So no, I have not experienced that at all. And it sounds more like that it might be either an issue with the dongle, hopefully it's going to be the issue with the dongle that the dongle is just kind of uh, picking a wrong frequency and or not working correctly or which would be more unfortunate is if the um, uh, yeah the wireless portion of the keyboard itself is having some issues or maybe it needs a firmware reset or an upgrade or something like that so if the new keyboard that you receive doesn't really uh, solve the issue, there are two aspects that I would be looking into. First one would be the firmware um, of the keyboard itself, like the updating or resetting of it, in case that it kind of got bugged out or something like that. And the second one is, I would reach out to the knock free um, support team and see if they can send you a replacement if they haven't with a device if they haven't sent you a repla replacement dongle uh, receiver because that's the one that's going to uh, mainly be the problem because it's the one receiving stuff and kind of communicating back it's definitely doesn't sound normal nor usual for that keyboard my fellow e-inkers, the best keyboard money can buy is the HHKB. It's bulkier and more expensive, but so worth it. I travel everywhere with mine. And damn, 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 because when I looked at it, it just looks so, so pretty, but it's so, so expensive. And I have my Go keys now, so I shall resist. I shall resist the temptation, definitely, but I'm putting it out there for those who may be interested. Um, because, oh damn, those keyboards look so sexy and so good. Um, yeah, they are extremely, extremely tempting. Uh, so yeah, if you're interested and if you have money to splash and splurge and something like that, then uh, uh, something to kind of think about. The Go keyboard cover should have some origami setup so it could adjust angle towards the typist. And we're talking about the Go keyboard that I was reviewing uh, just a little while ago. And and the thing is that it already does have an angle uh, built in here. And I disagree with the origami idea simply because this surface here, it's important that it stays flat on the ground for the keyboard stability when you're typing. You really don't want to make it like kind of angled and then it just then it starts kind of moving around. That would just worsen the experience quite a lot. But what they could have done potentially is maybe this area here could have been longer like right so it could have been a much much kind of longer kind of thing and if you added like feet here that you can snap like this to add more height and have a bigger angle so that this goes from an angle like this to something like this right so that you can just kind of raise it a bit and imagine if this was even higher and then it could get even higher then you actually 
get the best of both worlds because it remains to be flat on the ground, but you also get the adjustable tilt kind of thing. That being said, when I have my table at the appropriate elbow level height and that kind of stuff, I find that the angle that's already there, the tilt is more than fine and something that's really, really comfortable to type with. And despite the super shallow travel, that this keyboard has, I'm starting to like it more and more and more and more and more. I'm actually quite happy with the choice that I made. So yeah, it's a, it's a pretty, pretty sweet kind of thing. All right, we've gone through another set of questions and another Q&A is done. I hope that you enjoyed it and that you found it interesting and or useful. As usual, post your questions down below in the, yeah, uh, as your comments for videos like these, because that helps me and makes it easiest for me to find the questions for the next editions of Q&A. Thank you so much for watching. Stay safe, stay healthy, and see you in the next video. Bye.